It's recording now, so here we go. Shake uh, and bake. Yeah, shake, and, shake it and bake it. You gotta shake it before you bake it. I don't think I want to edit this out. Which is no, real. I wouldn't. Okay. You want to do the intro? Yeah. Welcome to Rough Fish Registry episode. I really don't give a crap at this point. 18. 18. Yes. Yep. So... You're eating that mic a little bit too much. Okay. Night. You told me to tickle my tickle my tongue with it or something. <laughs> no. I said we need to speak directly into it. Okay. But yeah. So okay, number eighteen, here we go. Yep. So uh what have you been up to? <sighs> or have uh, you been bow fishing at all? Let's get let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna be really honest. No. No. Because a couple of things. I've been traveling. For work quite a bit. Yeah. And um You got you got our episodes uh uploaded to YouTube, I saw. I did. Yeah. I did. I got three done in one night. I didn't tell you this. But the first one, I uploaded it to my personal YouTube account on accident. Oh I got to the, it was like thirty minutes in and it was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I am retarded. <laughs> Pretty frustrating. It's not a slow it's not a fast process, is it? No, it takes it takes about twenty minutes just to generate the video and then it takes probably another thirty minutes to upload to YouTube. Yeah. So it's like to turn a episode into a podcast to push out through iTunes and everything like that, it takes me like twenty minutes. Yeah. Tops. And uh, so iTunes takes about an hour. And the other thing is my computer is about five years old, so it pretty much renders it completely (laughs) useless whenever the video process is taking place because it's just like it's like hitting overdrive and a thousand degrees. So (laughs) the fans running. (laughs) Yeah, oh, it's 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 maxed out. It's uh, she's she's rolling coal at that point. Oh, that so, so that yeah. makes me think of the the Dustin Apple meme that he made, where he was like, had a picture of me saying I'm the talent. Uh huh. Because <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how to do any of that. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. It's job security for both of us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna get into American Chinese economics, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> Getting getting I, crazy on us over there. Oh, I heard I had some guy come into the store, one of our stores, and he was I'm selling a product, and he was like, I don't want to know that Chinese stuff, and I'm like, you know, and 95 percent of our batteries are made in the states, but a lot of the accessories and everything, I mean, they don't yeah. make any of it in the states, and I was just like, well, okay, and anyway, he started to ramble about how we owe China too much money, and I probably agree, but he's like, they're gonna come collect someday, and we're all gonna. We're going to start eating rice. <laughs> what, what, are they going to collect our souls or what? <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know, sir, if you've sat through any uh, economics courses in the last three or four years, but there's a strong um, opinion that they can never come collect because if they do, they piss off 90% of all their customers. <laughs> and, you know, anyway, anyway, we have gone off a way <laughs> rabbit trail. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So how's your beans growing? Uh, beans are looking good. Looking good. I stopped by our bean field, uh, I guess after baseball today, and they were they were coming up nice. So it's it's been a fun process. So we bought. Uh, we're going all in. We're like gonna hot wire off about a half of it. Yeah. Bought the stuff today. Trevor did, and uh, we're gonna hot wire it tomorrow. Two strands. Um. So, gonna round up it one more time. Um. Tomorrow as well. So, we got any good deer on camera, or do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I do. We've got <laughs> nah, not like yes, not like you. <laughs> I don't even want to. It's not even a comparison side by side. I want to do. So, side note: that deer I posted up on uh, Instagram is not from my farm at my house. So please don't, <laughs> please don't look up the plat book and and figure out where my land is and hunt there. It's uh. It's up by Stockton Lake, I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's... Yeah, so we have... I can say this. We may not have... I I mean, we've got... It looks good for where we are. Plenty of plenty of deer. Yeah. More, more deer than definitely last year at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, this, those beans, man, suck them in. 
Yeah. Like a tractor beam. Musical fruit. Tractor beam. <laughs> you sucked her right in. I wonder if they can smell them or if they just like happen to be walking through there. They're like, what's this? What's this oh. goodness? Oh, wow. This is uh, quite tasty. <laughs> yeah. I think they just, I mean, maybe they're just cruising by and they, you know, say, hey, this place is kind of cool place to hang out. You, yeah. know, every, you know, the other thing that's really cool, every time I go out there, there's turkeys. Yeah. Every time. I bet when they walk by that feeder, they're like, what is this magical device? <laughs> <laughs> every time I stick my nose in it, corn comes out. I was listening to the Dan Flores podcast, and he was talking about how this is a strange transition. They were talking about how they began to uh, trade with the American Indians back in the day, like how this, yes, had, I to that how too. the capitalism, you know, br- brought that system in, and like the trading and bartering, you know, hides and things like that. And th- and the guy was like, I don't even know how you'd go about doing that. And he, and he was explaining. Oh, that this is a cool story. This yeah. is really cool. What they would do is they'd like show up. It was, no, it, it was a new, it was a, a new, new trader. Right, that right. Came into an area to and take he, this guy's he place. They wouldn't know how to do it. So he said, this is how you do it. You go tie an ax to a tree. And come back a month later. And come back a month later and there'll be people standing there waiting for the new ax to appear. <laughs> and it's kind of like the deer and it, the it's kinda, corn feeder. Well, it's just, uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. But anyway, that's a really cool podcast. Yeah, that was uh again, the Meat Eater podcast. Yeah, it was. He Dan also Flores. was on Rogan. Yeah. I think 926. He talks about coyotes a lot. Yeah, he's a yeah. Or coy- coy- coyote. Coy- he says coyotes. Coyotes. And he I said if you shoot them, you call them coyotes, and if you don't shoot them, you call them coyotes. I, I thought that was a pretty accurate statement. Yeah, he also said if you're from Arkansas, you probably wouldn't say coyote because it's too fancy yeah so you're close enough i'm close enough i don't say coyotes so i went to this is a horrible transition i went to the jared ashmore youth tournament last weekend no oh, we're going we're diving straight in just jumping in two feet good yeah look like you had a good time oh man it was uh who puts know, that on what, what uh andy cardwell puts it on mm-hmm. um i didn't get a chance to talk to him I think it's in. Uh, I don't know. If, I, I don't. I don't want to say because I have no idea. So I'm. I'm gonna. If you have any questions, get with Andy because it's. Uh, I mean, it's a youth shoot, kids shoot free. Um, they gave away so much stuff. I mean, golly, Bass Pro donated a bunch of stuff. Muzzy AMS. I mean, the kids went out and like swarmed the AMS and Muzzy boat, and they were like. I mean, it was a good place to get trampled. I mean, they were throwing out all kinds of free stuff from them boats. So that was a good time. Uh, I got to get back over there, go shoot, uh, blow the dam again. That was that. That uh, is a good fish, apparently. Dude, I don't yeah. know much about spoonbills. Uh, all I know is is um, so our Instagram page. What? Usually, like, a 1,000 impressions per picture is pretty normal. Oh, yeah, that one's cranking, like, 18,000 right now. It's, uh... I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. It's, I don't know. But it's... I was... I, I'm kind of shocked by it. I don't know what it what it means. Yeah, or, I have no idea. But we're kind of... We're down with the sickness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a System of the Down <laughs> reference? Is that uh, System of the Down? Or Disturbed? System of the Down. No. Uh, I'll Google it. Yeah. Keep going. Anyway, so we... Uh, but Oh, hold on. I do have okay. a question about the youth shoot. I didn't realize, that, like, so kids can just show up and yeah. they can go on a boat with somebody. Uh, How's that work? Yes. So... Volunteer... Yeah, there is volunteer boats there. Like, Dustin Apple, he came over. Um, mm-hmm. No kids or nothing. I mean, he was just like, put some kids on my boat. I'm taking them. Right. So... I think it's uh, it's one of those deals that they try to take out as many kids. Disturbed. Okay, yeah. They try to take out as many kids as they can with how many boats they have. Right. So it was, I mean, it was awesome. We uh, got there late Friday night, I guess early Saturday morning. Uh, my kids slept all the way there. So <laughs> we roll in the hotel room, you know, at like 2 I'd carry them in, put them in bed. I'd go get all the crap out of the boat, get in the hotel room, get to bed about 3, 
and they're up at like seven. I'm like, let's go to the dam and shoot some fish. Because <laughs> I told them when we left, I was like, we're going to get up in the morning and go down to the dam and shoot some fish. I was like, just let me sleep a little more. So we, I ended up getting up about nine. Uh, went to the old huddle house. Mm. I sent you a picture of what I had for breakfast. It was like, yeah, it was like scrambled eggs. It was not gluten free and cheese, and ham. And was there jelly on top? I might have put jelly on there just to. <laughs> I, ve- make it. I vaguely remember there being jelly. Yeah, and then it was wrapped up in a hash brown. Oh. It was like a hash brown omelet with scrambled eggs. Oh man. It was it was pretty good. Mm. Make breakfast great again. Yes, America. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we ate there. Uh, ran into Dustin there, uh, and then we loaded up. Went straight to the dam. Uh, I was a little. I didn't really know which one to go to. There's Kentucky, and then there's Barkley. So I chose Barkley, and I guess I chose correct because I got there, and Belmore was there. Uh, John Justice was there. Had their kids down there shooting fish. They've been down there a while. Hadn't killed anything, I don't think. And uh, Belmore, he was after a big spoonie, Mm -hmm. and he left. And like 10 minutes later, I sent him a message with that picture of the spoon bill. Yeah. He was like, oh, you dirty dog. (laughs) But, no, it was a good time. I think I could stand down below that dam for probably all day. I mean, I'd be a sunburnt redneck, but I could stand down there all day because it's it's like a community yeah, like it, in itself down there. Sure, sure. Like, there's probably, like, 15, 20 people bow fishing, and, I mean, one guy would stick one, and everybody was shooting back up for him. And Did you see that the in the picture I posted? Mm-hmm. There was a girl in the background. Right, right. And she ended up posting on the picture. She's like, look at me in the background. I'm sit- standing back there jealous you yeah, know, that, yeah, yeah. that you just shot this fish. Well, I thought that was pretty cool. How it travels, you know. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It it looks like a hoot. And uh, like, you, you know, it would be just a big old, you know, group of fun people hanging out. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's... There's so many fish down there. I mean, it is definitely a target-rich environment. So Very cool. We shot some fish down there, went back. I tried to – I took a nap. My kids didn't. Uh, I woke up, and they were burning through the data on my cell phone watching YouTube videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dude Perfect. That's their, their Th- videos. Is that the go-to? Yeah, that's the go-to. So, Mine's, mine's still watching, like, cartoon, like, unboxing videos and <laughs> – that's amazing to me that people do that. They like unboxing like toys and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It's like a multi million dollar industry now, it seems like. <laughs> it's like the most spoiled it's like and it's always the same little kid. Mm-hmm. And he's got every power wheel on the planet. Like I'm unboxing an iPad twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> I d I don't even have one of those. And this kid's got thirteen of these. This thing is well packaged. The paper oh. in it is very nice. Very nice paper choice. Yeah. Good. The wipe is at least 200 thread count. <laughs> <laughs> so we get up from our nap, roll over the tournament, and got to hang out. Oh, we hung out for a couple hours, and uh, they did the all the free crap from the boats. And it was so funny because I don't remember – which kid it was but we were taking our group picture you know that big group picture right Mm -hmm. that had everybody in it and i want to say it was chuck's son maybe but listening to these kids trash talk each other oh oh it was awesome he's like i told you them buffs were on the rocks (laughs) my dad said the buffs were on the rocks and that's where we're going buffs were on the rocks (laughs) i want to be like this kid's probably lying. <laughs> <laughs> but That's it was awesome. funny listening to it go back and forth, and uh, that was pretty cool. Experts. Oh, yeah. But you remember that. I mean, like being a kid and oh yeah, wanting to, you know, put her all out there. <laughs> Be the man. That's right. <laughs> My dad said this, and by gosh, that's, that's right. That's the way it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's hilarious. So I was, I was worried... Where we were going, because I had no clue. 
like I'd never been down there. Um, I'd text some buddies and got a little bit of information on a couple of places to go. And I finally picked a place and I went and talked to Dustin Apple about it. And he's like, yeah, that's where I'm going. So we went and put in there. Um, again, Chuck and John was there. So I was like, well, I guess this isn't, <laughs> maybe I picked right. <laughs> and uh, we put GPS trackers on your boats, by the way. That's right. That's what our stickers are. We put them on the trailers. They never look there. <laughs> <laughs> so we ran we ran way up this river, and we found some tip and gar before dark, and the kid shot a little bit, and then it got dark, and I don't know if I should... Mm. should I don't know if I want to divulge. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows this. So we were shooting with flashlights. Uh, flashlights. Well, Dustin Apple does the... Has those yeah, videos. yeah, yeah. We're talking a lot about him tonight. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's got a nice beard. But I mean, you gonna go marry him or something? Yeah, maybe. He can build me a boat. <laughs> <laughs> so, my kids are nine and seven. Uh, so shooting with a flashlight is not the <laughs> easiest thing for a nine and seven year old to to kind of do, and. We got into some good silvers. Um, my seven-year-old shot his first fish, so that was pretty awesome. Pretty uh, cool. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't huge. It was maybe a eight-pound silver, mm-hmm. but he was jacked. I mean, it might as well have been a freaking 200-pound gator gar. <laughs> <laughs> but I planned on shooting backup for him. Right. So between running my trolling motor keeping my kids from beating the crap out of each other because one of them shoots before the other one when it's not his turn to shoot first. Oh. Oh. You, you probably could have heard us all the way down the river. Like, Brody, it was my turn to shoot first, you idiot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't say idiot, but... Uh, so anyway, we got in some silvers. They killed some. And Brody actually shot probably... Uh, I don't know. Big heads are so deceiving. I'm gonna say 25 to 30 pound big head, mm-hmm. but look like a good look like a good one. Oh yeah, I mean them suckers fight. So, but how he killed it is we come up, we come up behind this barge, and on the back side of it, I kicked the flashlight on. And there's a bunch of silver schooled up behind it, so he shoots at the silver, and he misses. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, reel it in, reel it in. So he starts to reel it in, and then all of a sudden his drag just starts screaming, just roar. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Like, I thought maybe there was like a pump or something down there that got his arrow caught in it and it was sucking the line up or something. I didn't know. So, and then it takes out into the main channel. I'm like, oh man, you got a fish on. So we're fighting this fish. Well, I'm trying to run the trolling motor. We've got a Bigfoot switch where we can run other LED lights, so I'm trying to keep my foot on that and then hand line this fish in. Mm-hmm. So my other son, the seven-year-old, he shoots like 20 pounds. Like, So this fish comes screaming down the side of the boat, and it comes in front of the boat on top of the water. And he's like, I got the backup shot, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like... No, <laughs> don't do it. I'm like, don't do it. I mean, when they shoot, I mean, their line gets tangled up. And Landon <laughs> drew back and drilled this sucker. I mean, this thing was at a dead sprint across the front <laughs> of the boat, and he just drilled it. So we had two arrows in it. We ended up getting it in, and they were just freaking jacked up. Landon was like, can I weigh it too? <laughs> I mean, he was wanting to double up. and Right. Because he did get an arrow in it, but... uh that's that's amazing. Oh, and when the silvers were jumping, I mean, the first time it happened, they liked to pee their pants. We had one jump in the boat, and Landon got down there and beat the crap out of it, <laughs> <laughs> and then threw it back in. Mm-hmm. But, that's right, uh, he did. That's my boy. <laughs> so Raised right. You know, we went to weigh in. Brody weighed like 40-some pounds, I think. He had five fish. So the individual weigh in? Yeah, yep. And then big five. And then Landon weighed two fish. Uh, he shot, I think it was like, it was only like 12 or 15 pounds, but it might as well have been 1,200 to him. Right. Well, I say that, he was dead asleep. Like, 
we got to weigh in, and there's a line like the open. You know, you're sitting there, mm-hmm. and uh, they were both out in the back seat. And we get up to where the weigh in was, and all the lights. And I go back and wake him up. I'm like, "Get on the boat, guys! Get on the boat." Well, Brody, he he kind of wakes up, figures out what's going on, and uh, Landon, I I just picked him up and set him on the front deck, and he just like tipped over like a tree and went back to sleep <laughs> on the front of the boat. <laughs> So I, I bet there were a few kids that were passed out. Yeah, I think he's taking lessons from Kenzie Taylor because she's always passed out in the passenger seat <laughs> coming home from bow fishing. Chad. Yeah, Chad, Chad, Chad too. too. Mm-hmm. Baby necking it, mm-hmm. you know. So that was my week, I guess. Yep. No, that that's a that's such a cool format, too. It's, I mean, any, any youth shoot is a good time, but, you know. Yeah, it's youth? not just a it's not just a you shoot like your dad's taking kids out that are going to be introduced to it period but it's you know mm-hmm. there's a lot of kids that may not ever get to go or have never right you know I don't I don't know how they you know how do they advertise that other than just I don't know just like come drop your kid off and we'll have him back at 2 a.m. I mean <laughs> this big bearded man's going to take him <laughs> yes. out of the water <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to be a pretty trusting parent for that one I mean I think it's been going 10 years now so. And I think over there, there's a lot more people that bow fish that don't have boats. You know, they shoot off that da- they shoot off the dam, <coughs> and uh, right. So I think I don't know. I think it's a good thing. There's, I think there's. Would it be safe to say because there's more, like, more water, more not more water, but more, more places to shoot from the bank. Yeah, more like fishable bank areas, like shallower water. Yeah, maybe. Or think of, like, drainage ditches and things like that for, like, ag fields and things like the, around here that we don't have. Do you see, like, people shooting? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. But there's not, I mean, there's not a bunch of that. That's not a big popular thing here in southwest no, Missouri no. at all. Um, Youth Worlds was this weekend, or today. I guess we're recording this Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy Woodward puts that on down in Oklahoma, uh, and that's another big tournament. So if you've got kids, you, guys, you and, went to that last year, didn't you? Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of what I'd call bank buffalo. You know, those five to ten mm. pound buffalo that are just cruising the banks and stacked up everywhere. We we saw a ton of those buff on a rock. That's right. That's right. So what are we going to talk about now? We uh, we have a topic. Yeah, we actually have a topic <coughs> this show. Yeah, we do. Contrary to popular belief, so yeah. Twenty-two minutes in, they're like, "Are they ever going to talk about this?" Because <laughs> it'll be on the title. But so, troller boats versus kicker boats. Yes, and this is, and this is by no means are we experts, and by no means do you need to not look up other stuff other than what we say. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's true. I mean, I've had a troller boat and I've had a kicker boat, and Pate has a troller boat. Yep, and has shot off my kicker boat. It's true. So <laughs> it's the uh, I've been thinking about it since we decided to talk about this. Um, both have um, benefits, obviously. Yep, both are. Um, very feasible. Mm-hmm. One is probably more um, cost effective in the long. In the long, it's. I guess the the thing is in my head, I don't have a kicker boat. Yep. But I've looked into it, and I've looked into it, and spending the money to do it. Um, the last two years, we ran a twenty four volt trolling motor, and we broke it a lot. We had like broke. A shaft, uh, armature went out, board went out, you know. Um, over let's the let's course go over pro, like pros of a troller boat before we get into the negatives. Uh, yeah, okay. So pros of a troller boat. I was getting there. Okay, sorry. But my, my quick synopsis, you're going to spend the money, because if some guys would be like, well, you know, kicker's so much more. In the long run. You know what I've done to my kicker since I've had it? What? I put a prop on it after a year. Yeah. That's the only thing I've done. I think you'll... Yeah, it'll, I guess it'll it'll change. my point. Yeah. You're going to spend your money up front, or you're going to spend it over the course... Yes. ...of, you know, a kicker motor should last five, six years. No no problem. Mm-hmm. 
And if you don't, if you do push pull. So anyway, not to not to jump too far in. Okay. Go. Troller boat. Pros. I killed a ton of fish out of my troller boat. No, no question. Um, so I, I think the pros of a troller boat, let's just, it's, I don't, I don't know if it's quieter than a kicker. I've never like got under the wall. <laughs> I've never jumped in the water. Right. And actually listened. From to above, you would think it's quieter. From above, you would think it's quieter because there's no exhaust coming into the water. Um, the prop's spinning slower. Um, and there's noise above the water. I mean, yeah, probably a little less vibration. Hmm. Um, yeah. But a, a troller, I think you can, in some circumstances, get places you can't get with a kicker. Sure. Um, with I, that, I would, I would think so. Like timber, like big, right. like I'm talking big timber, not like bushes and stuff like that. Like big timber, you can you steer from the front of the boat. You can bob and weave back into some spots that a a, a kicker wouldn't get you for well, sure. Well, the the same boat physically could get back there, but you're gonna need the front of the boat to help you pivot and move and things like that. Yes, and it's easier to drag the tail through it from the front versus push it. Yes, you know, and maneuver. So when we well in the open, we were in some areas actually the whole night. I had the troller on the front of my boat to get through a lot of the stuff that that I couldn't get through with my kicker because it steers from the back, not the front, and it uh, it's just a little harder to maneuver. Mm-hmm. So I think maneuverability of right. a troller, right? Um, a I little mean, more agile, maybe. Agile, yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd say agile, but maybe through the you know yeah I mean it, yeah. agile like in the sense of it can dance through the I don't know I feel like I could maybe because I don't know how to drive a kicker boat if you're just cruising bank obviously it's going to be more than enough you know a kicker to move it around but if you're in that big thick stuff where you're trying to go through whatever yeah disregard what I'm saying. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay? Let's just get that out there. So, we've got noise. We've got, like, I'll, I'll call it, like, I don't know what the word would be. Like, minimal adjustments to be able to get through mm-hmm. stuff. I don't know. Um, the agility of it. Agility. Yeah, that word. And That's pretty different from agile. Agile, agility. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> Hey, what's that? What's that plaque on the wall say? Don't first first loser. Yeah, twenty seventeen U.S. D- Open. Don't be mouthing. I mean, what do you, what do you think, kicker? I mean, what do you like about yours? Or about a, my, a, troller, my troller. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I mean, upfront cost uh, probably. Upfront cost. Yeah. The the ease of um, use. You know, any anybody can jump on and know how to run a tiller handle troll motor yes and, and the accessibility to parts and maintenance and so on and so forth i mean you i mean i think we're spoiled where we are here in southwest missouri to have like a shop you know we got a lot of places we got a lot of bass fishing so huge there's a lot of marine places around here but marine repair center yes you for know, sure any any kind of troller thing they are the gurus the godfathers they are awesome mm-hmm. so they can they can fix it quick. They can they have all the parts. Um, so just accessibility. So if something does happen, it's a quick fix. Um, entry level cost. You know you can get a. I mean, you can get a brand new thirty six volt one twelve tiller shaft. You know with just a quick connect setup for like eight hundred bucks. Yeah. You know. I think that quick connect setup is what makes the one thing I liked about it is super easy to take on and off. Oh yeah, um, get you get you two of those collars and you just mount them to your deck. Yeah, and the adjustability of the depth of running. You know, you get into some shallow water, you can just yank that thing up. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, I I mean, for for anybody that's getting started, there's no I mean it's if you just go out and buy a boat and build a rack for the front of it. 
a troller is probably the way to go. And, oh, yeah. And le- if you're starting out, you know. Yeah. yeah. Just because you don't have to run, you know, throttle cables or electric throttle cables to the front. You don't have to mess with uh, the steering cables. I mean, there's just, there's a lot more involved. It's with plug and play. Yeah, plug and play for sure. Yeah, no no question. And it, um, I, I really think that it's the, it's the best choice for, for that anyway. Um, so the kicker, though. I mean, there's a, there's a reason that a lot of people switch or move to them. Yes. From the troller. Uh, rundown. What do you Going think? Going pros of kicker? Sure. You can cover so much water. So they're faster? Yes. Quite a bit faster. I'd, I'd say I can fish five to seven miles an hour and still have a little bit of power left to right. you know, run a fish down or, or something like that. Whereas a standard troll motor is like two and a half miles an hour. I don't even know if it registers on GPS. Yeah, it's, no, it's, I'm just it's, no, it's slow. It There's is no slow. question. No, I think ours at full speed, like a 36 volt 112, then an 1860, it's like two and a half miles an hour. So, I mean, you're doubling, tripling your speed. Um, so, you know, t- two to three times the coverage of water. For sure. The. Uh, I think the. With that speed comes what we said earlier is, I guess we're doing pros, so I'm not going to say say the cons. But, right. Uh, cover a lot more water. Cover more water. More, um, I would say, depend. No, yeah, maybe dependable. Yeah. Depending on the setup, but I mean, it's more. Um, there, you're you're not. There's not as many constraints as far as run times. I mean, it's just how big a gas tank you got. Yes. I mean, you can. I mean, we run it all night, and I never even... You don't think twice? No. I mean, you don't even think, like, man, I might be running a little low. On, I mean, I've got a 50-gallon tank in my boat, but, I mean, I've, I mean, we, I bet you that kicker doesn't burn five gallons of fuel in a full night tournament. Right. And it'll, with the speed comes the ability, like, I'm going to call them bushes, like we talked about a couple episodes ago. Um, I mean, you can just blow right through them things. Right. Uh, do you let off the throttle as you push through it, or do you just no? Like, I just, just plow. Give her just gas on it. Yeah. <laughs> Go to hear glass or smell poop. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you just gas on it and you run right through that stuff as long as it's little. Um, you know, logs, stuff like that, where you'd have to either go around with the troller or you come up to it, lift it up, put it down. Um, most kickers, you can run right over a floating log. When the kicker motor hits it, it just bounces up mm-hmm. and then drops right back down, and you're off and trolling again. Yep. So, the, so, so I guess we'll roll. To, we're doing this really awkwardly. Two pros, and then we're gonna do the cons. So, cons of a trolling motor: yep. susceptible to damage. Yes, they break pretty easily. So the last year I ran my troller, I went through three props, probably. Now, granted, I was running a converter, converters, multiple, Mm -hmm. uh, on a 36 volt. Right. I went through probably four boards. Whew. Yeah. That's a bunch. Yes. Um, And... I went through two shafts. I broke two shafts. Um, Man. It was gnarly when they broke. One of them I broke on a barbecue grill in Stockton. Right. Remember, yeah, I remember that. And then another one I broke on uh, Truman. Uh, I don't know what I hit. It just folded that sucker over and it exploded. <laughs> I mean, it. They make a pretty um, specific sound when they break. Because they can, I mean. Oh, yeah. I've, you know, you some it's, it's the strangest things. When they break, you you hit like something so small, or like when we broke ours, we were on Gunnersville, and I just hit this little rock. It was muddy, and I couldn't see anything, and you heard it pop and heard it snap. And it's just you know, but I've hit I've hit stumps, I hit a bench, in a campground, and that dude, I mean, it went back and folded up against the boat, 
and it didn't break. When you think you're going to break it is not when it you does break not, it. it. Nothing happens. But yeah. Just on the little stupid crap is what actually snaps it. On my big boat, we hit something with it, and I, it folded all the way up and under, like with the curve of the front of the boat, and then it just sprung back and like kept on trucking. Yeah. Talking to those guys at any <coughs> troll motor shop, you know, for them to see them break, they're like, you had to, you know. They still, I mean. When I go into marine repair, they're always looking at me like, what happened now? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it just, it's, it's just hard on them. And the constant, they're not, a trolling motor is not designed to sit there and run at 75 to 100%. All night long. No, I mean, they're built for bass guys that sit on a spot and might move the nose of the boat around or slowly work a bank. It work in, probably work in a boat that weighs less, yes. that floats through the water better, Yep, and doesn't, isn't burning through as much. Yeah, I mean... So, I mean, it's just, it's, it, it works for, for us and what we want to do, but it's not designed for us. No, I mean, my dad, do. he, when I started burning troll motors up, he was like... Good gosh, man, what are you doing with these things? <laughs> and I was like, I said, I probably run more bank with my trolling motor than you run with your, than you drive with your big motor some days. Oh, yeah. You know, I said, it's nothing to find a big flat, put the trolling motor down, and run for four hours, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's what they're not made to do. Right. And... I saw, I think it's, again, the McCann brothers. Yeah. Speaking of burning boards up, um, they took their board. I, I, I may not have this exactly right. They took their board out of the head of their trolling motor. They mounted it in a box on the front. Maybe, maybe it's right on the front of the boat where they can see it, or maybe it's on the bottom. I don't remember. And they put fans on it, like mm -hmm. electric fans. Right. And they keep that thing cool. I don't. I haven't heard if it uh, if that works. If it works or not. But uh, I've seen a post about that somewhere else too. Like they did something. Or I saw one where they could put a fan on the top of the head mm -hmm. of the trolling motor. Yeah. Hmm. So I always thought it had more. To, I thought it had something to do with the when you run a converter in your the extra volts that are the running extra through voltage. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, the operating voltage of a flooded or an AGM. We're flooded or AGM batteries anywhere from... you think a battery guy could come up with something to... No, they did. They came up with a bow fishing version. When it's a lower voltage, yeah, full charge. I was just thinking of something that could go in line, like... Like a reducer or something. Reducer that always makes sure it gets, like, 12 volts or whatever, 24 volts. Mm hmm Yeah. Whatever it needs. Work on that. I should. <laughs> Prime market, ready to, ready to burst. Um, Extra batteries in the boat is another con. Yeah, uh, if, you're it, it, if you're not running converters, it really it is. Well, and especially if yeah, if you're not running converters, you're gonna you, you're gonna have to have a lot of extra batteries. So we run so that we c we don't have so that I don't have to run converters, so that I don't have to have extra set of batteries. I have four hundred and twelve pounds of batteries just for the trolling motor. Yikes! Those are three batteries. They are big. Um, they're bigly. Trust me, they're huge. Those are your big batteries, right? Yeah, yep. they're 190 amp hour, 12 volt each, um, and they they they're great. Um, you can you can run hard, hard, hard like 36 volt trolling motor, 112, 100 percent for 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours, which. Um, which, you know, regular old group 27, 31, you're getting four or five hours maybe. So um, they work great, like I said, but you got to think about 400 pounds in the space that those take. Um, if you were building a boat, you could probably build some sort of rack for them to you, you make it a little could. better. But oh, definitely. If you wanted if you wanted to, to you know, if that's, if that's the way you – if you were just dead set against a kicker or dead set against um, converters or or whatever, we we still like to run silent, you know, mm -hmm. no, no generator. So, um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. It's a it it is a con, but it's just part of it. 
But the thing is, so to have a battery like that, um, you talk about a kicker setup, you're thinking, you know, if, if you buy brand new everything and you set it up, and I'll get flamed for this because they'll be like, oh, I bought my guy set my kicker up for 1200 bucks, And it's like, well, yeah, if you find the sweet deals and you yeah. know the right guys. I mean, you've been um, doing the research here lately, though, right? Yes. I mean, you're going to spend you're gonna spend $3,500, $4,000. Yes, to set setup. everything up new. But do a little math, folks. So a new kick, new troll motor, eight hundred bucks. Yep. Twenty four or thirty six, about about around the same. Um, eight hundred dollars. Three batteries are gonna run you. Three just regular, just say you're buying regular batteries. Regular twelve volt deep cycle. Hundred bucks a piece. I don't know. You're the. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. It's a okay, hundred. Okay. Hundred bucks a piece. You're gonna need a uh, three bank charger. That's two hundred to three hundred bucks. So you're up to, uh, that's that's fourteen hundred, right there. And so even with that even setup, do away with the with the charger because if you do converters, you can charge with your converters. Okay, well then uh, if you want to do converters, those are one hundred and fifty a piece. That puts you at what? So so really, it's you know it's kind of a wash. Yeah, yeah. On that front, so say you do converters, no, don't do a charger. So four fifty, seven fifty, eight hundred. So fifteen, fifteen hundred fifty bucks. And, and then two generators to run the converters. Two generators to run the converters. Or one, yep. or one or big one. Or one say big one. Say you buy a Harbor Freight one, a real loud sucker. Don't even know what I'm talking about. Honda, 2000 thousand yeah. bucks a piece, right? Just say you buy a Harbor Freight, 3000 watt, 500 bucks. So you're at two grand right there. Yep. So you can run all night at that point. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you're at 2000 bucks. You're going to break that troll motor. You're going to burn up a board. What's a board? Uh, 150, 200? Yeah, something like that. 200. So so you burn four boards in one year? And this is this these are numbers that if you don't fix it yourself, if you don't have the ability to, you know. I'm I'm I mean, I guess the board thing. I don't I don't know what a DIY board fix would cost. I'm I'm not for sure. I don't I I would say but anywhere 150, 200 bucks. So I guess what my point is in those bat so the batteries, you know, batteries are not a I'm not a, being a very great battery salesman right now, but you know, you're going to have to replace those in 3 to 4 years. Mhm. Okay. Um you know, you're going to use a generator and it's going to make a lot of noise, especially if you buy a Harbor Freight one. Uh it's going to be loud. Uh you can buy two Honda what th- you know, 2000s and that that's and getting you up to kicker numbers, though. Yeah, if you do that, you're at four grand instead of. So I guess my point is, it's how you want to like if you want to piece it together, and just kind of get into it. That's why a lot of people just go to it straight away, because it makes sense financially, and you can kind of piece it together and and make it work like that. But after a while. You start spending the money here. You start spending the money there. You know, t- we haven't even talked about you break a shaft or an armature or anything like. You break a shaft, it's two hundred bucks, two hundred fifty bucks. I think, I think marine repair warranties at once for a bow fishing setup. An armature? No, a shaft. Yeah. They didn't warranty mine. Well, maybe, maybe I spent so much money there. They were like, yeah, we'll cut this guy a break. <laughs> no, they didn't. I mean, I, mine was still under quote unquote warranty. They fixed. Now they did. They did fix something else for me. I don't, I don't even know what it was. Did they just charge you labor? Cause nope. I, th- I thought shafts had a lifetime warranty. No, no, no. Okay. I, I paid for it. Yeah. So, but you know what? I know why. Because, um, we jerry rigged it. I'll I'll post the picture on the blog. Yeah. Um, we jerry we were in Gunnersville and we had one night left to fish. So we went to like an Ace Hardware and bought this like metal pipe to slide over it and basically sleeve it. Yeah. And then we used like uh, uh, what's that stuff you spray into cracks, like crack filler. That foam, foam stuff, expanding foam, expanding foamed. So we sleeved it with a pipe, put expanding foam all in it, and then used about two rolls of duct tape and then waterproof tape, and we got we got water. Into the uh, uh, in the motor and it burned it up. So I'm liking I'm liking that fix though. That's pretty. Hey man, we had one more night to go and it worked like a charm. Yeah. So otherwise we'd have been d 
DOA. I'm trying to find this picture of the broken troll motor shaft I had. Oh, yeah. It's it's a gnarly deal. And you're you're you were toast. So they they both have I don't feel like this episode's been super informative. We kind of were just talking in circles about what everybody already knows. Yeah. But I mean, you can see the full I think it's easier to understand the whole spectrum of it whenever you go. It's okay, you know, if there's a guy's like putting a boat together. Don't I mean, I don't know that it's necessary to go throw a kicker on your first boat. No. I mean, that's going hard to the house and may not be necessary. You kind of need because here's the thing with the kicker, you still have a trolling motor. Yes. You do. No, that, I mean, most guys do. Most guys do. Um, I mean, I ran a trolling motor all night at the, uh, the youth tournament. Yeah. I didn't run my kicker because of the situation we were in with mm-hmm. silvers and big heads. Yeah. So different uh, strokes for different folks. Yep. Downside of the kicker. I guess. Yeah, cons. Um, if something does break. If something does break, it's going to be pretty pricey. Um, and, and unless you're Mr. Fix-It. Yeah, I mean, that'll be lower unit. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say prop. I mean, props, I think prop was 120 bucks or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but lower unit, uh, I mean, I had... I had to, and I am not Mr. Fix It, so don't flame at me because I'm like, well, I went, I had somebody fix this for me. Uh, my water pump was full of zebra mussels hmm. uh, from running bushes and trees and stuff on bull shoals. So, I mean, that's, I guess the fixes, if something does break, are more expensive. Um, and rigging. Rigging a kicker as far as steering and throttle. You can do it all yourself. It can be done for sure. Um, I am not a mechanic. I am not what you would call... I would say I'm, I'm handy, but I'm not, I'm not a... But not in the uh, fix-it-yourself sense. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm just meaning like there's as far an, as... There's an underlying joke there, too. Yeah, I know. It's... What was the underlying joke? Handsy. Handsy. That's what my wife says. So, as far as rigging a kicker, it can be done on your own. And doing a push-pull system like I did, there's there's more to it than just hooking this cable up and pushing and pulling. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it has... There's You heard it here first. Yes. It has... I mean, it... The, you know... Where it mounts the motor, it's not... These motors don't come... Right. I'm tr- I, I guess I'm trying to... It's taking me five minutes to spit this out. Yeah. It's, it, again, these you're motors talking about a situation... Yeah. Right. Some of the motors... I mean, yes, some of the motors, uh, like, a, you know, like a pro kicker, is built to have a electronic... Most of those that are put out there are, are more for, like, the, the guys that just troll for fish all the time. So yes. the electronic... Yeah. Steering situation is what they use ninety percent of the time, mm-hmm. and the push pull thing. Um, I think they, I'm sure they, they did some of that back in the day, but nowadays it seems like most of that's for bow fishing. So yes. they're not built to accept or just right out of the box fit a cable for the steering control. There's going to be fabrication and brackets you have yeah. to make. Yeah, you know, it's, it's to not uh, just like to make that work. It's not plug and play x you know buy this kit buy this kit buy this kit here's the specific instructions to make it work on your boat yeah also has to do with like if you ever if you ever um drove a boat that didn't have hydraulic steering that did have a push pull steering like on a bigger motor Mm -hmm. you'll feel like resistance sometimes because the cable gets bound up and maybe the guy that rigged it didn't do it right or something like that yep so it's a similar thing with a kicker you kind of need to know i mean you can figure it out like i said all these things you know there's guys that get off by figuring this crap out, and they just yes. love it. They yes. love doing that stuff. And more power to you. Um, but there's guys that just that don't. That just don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, if you there's there's people that can help, and uh, they're That's, all over I mean, the internet. And, and throttle. I mean, you've got j- not just your steering. You've got your throttle. Throttle cable, yeah. Um, whether you do like I did, where I've got a. 
basically a handle or mm-hmm. uh, where you just squeeze it and it, it gives throttle or lets throttle off. Right. Or you go electronic, yeah. which control, even... W- control king and powertrain. Yeah, and even even with the electronic throttle and steering that g- that can come along with it, um, you have to be somewhat able to get inside there and mount, you know, these... It, it's more plug-and-play, but it's still, like, there's troubleshooting to be had, you know, like... I uh, mean, because they're basically little motors, right, that you have to mount into the steering cable or the steering tube and... Yeah, the powertrain one actually is pretty easy. Yeah. The control, the throttle control ones, I've I've read quite a bit about, and um, it's supposed to be easy, but sometimes, um, say I've I've heard I've read problems with, you know, they didn't they weren't um, there wasn't enough power. The b- maybe the starting battery they were trying to run this accessory off of didn't have enough juice, uh. and they were burning up. Um, Capacitors, I think, is what they were saying. I can't remember. The guy beside me at the at the youth tournament, he was. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this. I don't remember his name, so I feel bad about that. They won the first open, the very first U.S. Open. Oh, uh, w- uh, yeah, Campbell, something Campbell, Campbell Woods, or is that the second one? That was the second one. Uh, the first guy, he's on. He's, he's on got a Sea Arc jet, a uh, Sea Arc jet boat. Mm-hmm. And he's got a kicker on it, and he had the powertrain steering and the control king throttle. I remember he was the one I was l- l- reading the thread about gotcha. with the control king. It was having the electrical issues, and they f- they figured it out. But it took you know two electrical engineering degrees and <laughs> you know four cases of beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what all have I said? Cons, uh, cost, cost, and just like and a rigging. lack of accessibility to get it fixed. Yes. Uh, you know, you can't just take it. You roll into, like, any just old marine shop, and they're going to look at you like, oh, I've never even jacked with one of yeah. these. Yeah, what is this sorcery? Yeah. Yeah. You want me to fix what? So, um, I'll say another con is the ability to fish, like, and this is just a kicker. No. The way I run it, if I'm doing, if I'm fishing like this, is I run a kicker and a troller. Um, but running bank and then being able to weave in and out of these little, you know, docks. Well, dock, yeah, docks for sure. But I'm just talking like if you're coming down a bank and there's bushes and there's an open spot of water behind these bushes mm. and there's a little opening, like turning and getting into that and being very precise about what you're doing being agile <laughs> yes being agile mm-hmm. um or running docks uh like gunnersville lake of the ozarks um i've always got my trolling motor on the boat because and it actually makes it kind of fun because you uh you know you'll come into a dock you'll go to the back side of it, bank side or whatever, you'll fish the bank. We'll use the trolling motor and the kicker together, and you can spin that boat in a very tight circle. So agility, I guess, (laughs) is the downside, but not speed. I mean, the speed is awesome. Yeah, I mean. And and I don't know about the noise. I mean, I think we talked about that, but. Have you noticed a lack of? You know, have you seen notice fish blown out faster because of it, or do you think you roll up on them fast because you, of your speed? You you get to them faster, and they don't. I think because of the speed, you can get up on them quicker. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I don't. I don't know. I think there's two schools of thought: is you can run a troller and LED lights and be quiet and sneak up on fish, or you can run high pressure sodiums with two generators screaming and the radio blaring and the kicker running wide open and chase them down <laughs> chase them down <laughs> yeah yeah either way works for both i mean either way works for different people i guess mhm so i think it's per- it's got to be just personal preference yeah but so i guess to answer the question i don't know if if uh a kicker spooks fish or not yeah I don't know. Yeah. I don't either. It's we'll just have to we'll just have to do some more testing. Yeah. Put the man hours in, you know what I'm saying? I mean Chad Puddin thinks it does. He thinks it scares him? He does. 
He does think it scares him. A yeah. little. I mean, he. I don't know. I, I will say this. I've killed, and I had it longer. I've had the boat longer. I had my troller boat longer than my kicker boat. Mm-hmm. But I killed more grass carp out of my troller boat than I have my kicker boat. Mm. Yeah. So. I would almost, yeah. Put on that those, in your pipe and smoke it. I think on that fish that there could be an argument there. But maybe not. I don't know. There may be somebody's like. I mean, I mean, I've been on Truman though, and rolled into a cove, and had the kicker running, and generators running, and all my lights on, and there'd be like four grass carp laying there, and they never move. But isn't Truman full of little grass carp? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it is, but it isn't. I got you. It just all depends. I'm watching film. I'm watching. I'm sitting here. We're in my office, and I'm watching my downstairs employees. <laughs> <laughs> so that was random. We edit that out. It's okay. Yeah. It's all right. No, we'll we'll keep it. It's all good. We're human. It's good in the hood. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You, know, you know, you listen to some of these podcasts, and the guys are, you know, they're reading off a script, and it's just the most canned thing on the planet. And what did you eat for breakfast? Uh, I'd like to take a minute here to, uh, it's not about my sponsors. I was using Sitka gear long before we were ever (laughs) sponsored. I truly believe in it. It's really good stuff. Uh, we're going to take a minute here to, uh, Sitka story. They have a Sitka story. (laughs) Oh my gosh. What? That's funny. It's, I mean, not, I don't even know who does a Sitka story. I'm just saying. You don't know who does that? No, th- I mean, there's like, they sponsor all of the stuff now. I know, I'm not going to call them out, but there is a guy that pauses for a sick story. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no shade. I'm, I'm not dogging you. Yeah, uh, he's a lot bigger than us. <laughs> yeah, way bigger. They're all, let's backtrack. They're all bigger than us, so maybe we should start doing an Oneida story. <laughs> yeah. Plug. I drew back my Oneida. It it felt down. so good. It was so smooth. So if it wasn't for that smooth of a draw, <laughs> I'd have missed. Not a freaking oh. doubt in my mind. I feel like we rambled on this show. We always ramble. Well, we rambled more than we did. We did a lot of the. Uh, it went from conversational. We we're trying to force it, and it wasn't just natural. Yeah. Here, long and short of it, kids. Kid, you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I listened to the last episode like three times, and I was trying, to, I was trying to get our ratings up on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, or on uh, iTunes. But so I listened to it, and you called our listeners kids, <laughs> and I was like, what? "You're the kid." That's true. You well, young pup. I'm 27. Yeah, and, and half of my audience goes, <laughs> "No." <laughs> the fact of the matter is. I mean, everybody that's got a troller kind of looks at the kick and goes, I kind of want one of those. And then everybody that's got a kicker like me looks at a, you know, a, a twin mud motor setup or an airboat and is like, man, I kind of want one of those. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a natural. It's, it's everything in life. I'm going to say this. We were talking about sound. And how can Tommy and Shorty run around with a 600-horse LS motor with a prop spinning like Mach 2 and kill a thousand pounds of grass carp. That's my mic drop right there. Break, break my. There you go. There's my mic drop. And everybody that's wearing headphones just, <laughs> you know, lost their hearing for a few minutes. Is it okay? All right. I get it. I understand. It's a good point. It's a great point. <laughs> where are you going with this? But here's where I'm going with this. Okay. Is it because the fish they shot were dumb? hadn't hadn't had pressure it before? Could, it could be. I mean, I don't. But know. if I mean, like, I'd I'd be curious to know for guys that maybe or maybe Gunnersville, not not last year, year before, but like or Tabor Rock. I really do think there's still a lot of fish on Tabor Rock and Bull Shoals, but they're getting smarter. You know how to how to test that theory? How? go out and shoot with flashlights for about a whole night and see if you see more fish. I've tried that. Well. And but I but the whole time I'm like I'm just not shining this stupid little flashlight in the right spot. <laughs> it's a friggin' pain in the butt. 
No, I mean, but that's, I don't know. It, anyway, I guess that's the the mystery and the allure to the whole thing. Yep. That's It's the chase, right? I mean, it's like, it's, it's with it. I see no less commons on Table Rock during the spawn than I've seen in the past five years or four years. Oh, in the spawn? No. So the fish are still there. It's not like during the spawn, you're like, man, there's less fish spawning. No. They're still there, mm-hmm. but just not throughout the year like they were. Yeah. I think they're smarter. Maybe the carp fishermen are telling them all our secrets. All the fly fishermen? No, the yeah, the carp fishermen, however they fish for them. With their cans of corn? Their cans of corn. On their ethical high horse? Yeah. Please. Yeah. You're chasing a fish that eats poop all day. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go shoot a fish just for a carp fisherman tonight. I'm going to go find one. Mm. Let's not make anybody mad. Yeah, I know. It's like I said, they're not bad guys. So No, definitely not. Yeah. I'd like to have one on. Yeah. And talk to him. Yeah. As long as they weren't like, I don't know, unreasonable request or something like. We They'd have to stoop us. Like, we'd have to be talking to him. And obviously, anybody that we bring on, would we'd kind of know going into it whether they were going to be belligerent or not. We probably wouldn't have a belligerent person. But if they no. were like, they long conned us and. Talk to us the sweet the sweet game the whole time, and then they get on here and it's like, screw you guys. But you know the best thing? We got that delete button. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I should have hit record. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, is that it? Are we done? We're at an hour. I guess. We've talked a bunch. Know. Yeah. About, I don't know. Not about My much. My wife just I mean, texts me once McDonald's. Well, you better stop at McDonald's. I know. I hope they're still open. It's only eleven. Yeah. Twenty. Yeah. I, I I mean I guess the 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 bottom line is bottom line is you can kill fish with either. You can kill fish with anything. You can. And and it'll be an argument that it really isn't even an argument though, because everybody that I mean nobody I've never seen anybody go, Boy, I've got this kicker and I sure do hate it. I'm going back to a troller. Yeah. I mean, everybody still has a troller. For I've those. never seen anybody have a troller be like, "Man, I hate this thing. I'm gonna get me a paddle." <laughs> right. It's it's the natural evolution, and I think the, I think the answer is, eventually, you do or you don't go to it, and it just is a matter of, um, what do you value, in the process? Do you is the silence that big a thing to you? Is psychologically for you, or is it just a you know, or is it a thing for the fish? And financially, uh, it's a cash outlay once, or it's a cash outlay, you know, spread out over three or four years. I went kicker so I could cover more water. Bottom line, mm-hmm. I mean that was the ol- no that arguing. was my only thinking is I could cover four times the water a night that I could cover with a troller. Yeah. So anyway, That's join the it. join the BAA. Join the BAA. It's free. It's great. Uh, BAA is coming out with. Uh, each state has their own Facebook page now. I saw that. Yep. So you invited me. Yep. State Rep. Mr. Wilmoth here. Oh. Yep. I got him. It's a long con. I really, I'm really a carp fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> no. But uh, so it's just kind of the. It's not like they're doing away with the the you know big BAA and just making the state thing. It's not actually a state like club. It's just a way to get information out from the state and from the BAA. People are more likely to like a state page, huh. I guess. Yeah. If that makes any sense at all. And join uh, Bow Fishing Association of Missouri, if you're from Missouri. Um, it's also free. Uh, myself and Jeff Browning are, I guess I'm vice president, he's <coughs> president, so... If anybody, bing, w- boom. if anybody wants to go assassinate him, I'll be the new president. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling a Johnny Depp. <laughs> That's right. Oh boy, let's not go there. Yeah. Um, they have a they have a BA state shoot. Uh, Missouri does. So Missouri will have our. Uh, oh, I meant to say BAM. BAM. Yeah. Shoot. So our state shoot is. I don't know. It's in the fall. It's like uh, late August, right? Early yep. September. Lake of the Ozarks, Truman, Table Rock, Bull Shoals, Palmy, 
all them lakes. It'll be out of Lake of the Ozarks, though. Yeah, in Warsaw, right? Yes. Uh, Angler's Port. Angler's Port Marine. Yep. Fantastic place. Letting us do the way in and everything there and take off. and Good people. Yeah. Uh, guys, do me a solid and review the page on iTunes. That would be that'd be like really cool of you yeah. to do that. Gooch underscore 90. Go to iTunes and Come on, give Gooch. us a review. Come on, Gooch. Let's see here. How many did we pick up any we reviews? We got 12. We got 12. Did we get that means we got one extra last week. Yeah, I, I couldn't find out which one it was though. It shows a date on them. I know, but it was you one that was, we had in the past. We're on Fish Radio. Yeah. Here we go. So 12. Review. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're we're just rambling here. Yeah. Like okay. us, review us, subscribe us. Man, hardcore Chiver. June thirteenth. He was pretty nice guy. That's hey, go on the YouTube page or go on the iTunes page. Check out reviews. Hardcore Chiver. Just he's he's got the man with the plan. Yep. Um okay. Is that it? I guess. Are we post hey, real talk. Are there are we posting too many memes? I know, I think they like him. I do too, but I really do. It's like if we don't have good enough content we just post memes. We get a lot of feedback. And they're funny. Is a meme a meme? No. <laughs> meme. What, you like 45-year-old lady? I posted this meme on my son's page. Yeah, we talked about that. I, we? Li- I like the post you put on my Facebook today. Yeah. <laughs> or yesterday or whatever. Yeah. Your funny. wife, like, gave an angry face with it. Yeah. And I almost tagged her and then posted a meme. Like, <laughs> you mad, bro? <laughs> Did you ever get you ever get in those meme wars? Uh, we do on some private pages. Yeah, uh, yeah you don't want some get of the pro staff pages I'm on are pretty good. Yeah, then get a little uh, out of hand. I get a good one on Jeff Browning. Oh. Yeah, he's laying like on a pool table, like laid out with his hand under his his head. Mm-hmm. And I, anytime I want to end a meme more with him, I always just post it, and I have a with a picture of him, and it says, "Draw me like one of your French girls." There you go. <laughs> And he's always like, "You son of a b." <laughs> that that rem- he posted that thing this morning for the bats and, or yesterday maybe he's like, I "Helped design this boat, you know, yada yada." I put the tracking device in there, and I was like, I almost commented. I was like, "You've got a built-in tracking device in your pocket that you never shut off." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we he, knew exactly where you were during the whole open. He gave me a hard time about that. He's like. You son of a buck, you're tracking me for a week before the <laughs> open. <laughs> like, maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I plead the fifth. Maybe he should have put a watch on there because he showed up late to the way in today, too. Oh, <laughs> that's bad. Yeah. So did the Scroggins boys. Yeah. They, uh, they told me where they were at, and they were way up in the boonies. Uh, in the, in the boat, as far as they didn't, they were on Truman, but they were way way up, and they had to idle and take their time to get through an area. I guess there was trees everywhere. I mean, there's trees everywhere on Truman, but mm-hmm. this is horrible. Let's just stop. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Yep. Thanks for putting up with us this week. Insert cheesy exit line right here. Uh, see you on the water. Stay slimy. Stay slimy. Oh, that's no. uh, that's, that's close. Nope, that one's bad. No, bad. Okay. All right. See you, dude. See you, kids. <laughs>